Hey folks, Jim and Leela here this week uh, for this week's uh, F DC 52 review. It's week three. Three. Uh, only one more week and I'm free. Free. <laughs> anyway, uh, here's Leela with the first review of this week. Okay, so first up we've got Batman, number one by Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo. So in this one, Batman and Nightwing investigate a weak link at Arkham Asylum. And then a brutal murder reveals that Bruce's life is in danger and someone in his inner circle might be involved. Okay. Joker. So, yeah, I liked this issue. Um, Snyder's story is gripping right out of the gate. Um, there's an interesting little bit where Bruce interacts with all of his wards and his son at the same time, which you're like, wow, he, he's, he's juggling of, them all at the same time. That's kind of interesting, but good. I liked it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sold on Capullo's art. Um, I mean... Many of the things I like about it, but the only thing I don't like is how he does Batman. And that's sort of a significant part of a Batman book. Um, but, you know, other times I really liked it. So it it's sort of inconsistent for me. Not my favorite Batman book that's been out so far. It's, that's still Detective, but still a good read. Next up, Wonder Woman, number one, written by Brian Azzarello with art by Cliff Chang. And in this one, the gods set out to kill a young woman and her unborn child. So Hermes whisks her away to Diana's home. But the trip back only leaves more questions than answers. Um, I'm not a fan of this. <laughs> um, I really... Thank gosh. Uh, the art really takes away from the story. Uh, I hate, hate the terrible new costume that they have Wonder Woman wearing. Uh, and as much as I love Azzarello as a writer, mm -hmm. I don't think the horror theme works really well. With Wonder Woman. With Wonder Woman, yeah. yeah. Uh, I like the fantasy aspects. I like that. But I really don't think it works very well with Wonder Woman. So I can't really highly recommend it. But if you're a Wonder Woman fan, at least check it out. It's okay. All right, next up we've got Blue Beetle, number one. This is by Tony Bedard and Ig Guerra. So this one, Jamie Reyes is a teenager dealing Sounds with... Sounds like all a terrible disease. I Ig know, Guerra. it's a weird name, but mm. anyways. Um, he's a teenager dealing with all the usual drama that comes at that age. You know, girls, school, how to be cool. Um, but uh, high school is going to seem like a piece of cake compared to uh, his life after he's linked to a powerful scarab created by The Reach an alien race bent on subjugating worlds, including the Earth. Hooray! Yay! Um, so, this is a pretty good start to the series. I think if you're a Blue Beetle fan, you're still going to like this. I liked it a lot. I like the art. I like the story. And I'm looking forward to the clash with the Green Lantern Corps that is hinted at. Overall, it is a pretty good read. Next up, Birds of Prey, number one. Written by Dwayne Swarzynski uh, and yes. Jesus Says. And this one... Uh, Black Canary and Starling come together as Gotham's newest covert ops team, taking down villains other heroes can't. But now they also have to deal with being wanted women for a murder and a reporter hot in their trail. Um, okay, I kind of like this one. It wasn't bad. Not half bad at all. I love that uh, they had Babs in there, Barbara Gordon. She shows up for a little brief cameo. Mm -hmm. um, it's got an interesting premise. I'm kind of wondering where... Uh, Poison Ivy fits into the, all this, uh, but, and let's just say, it doesn't end well for the reporter at the end, but uh, it's not overall a bad book. I quite enjoyed this, the premise, so at least there's that. The art's okay, too, so check it out if you're a Birds of Prey fan. Okay, so next up we've got Captain Adam, number one, by J.T. Cruel and Freddie Williams II. So in this one, Captain Adam has um, amazing molecular powers. He seems to be a hero who can do anything. Um, but there are warning signs beginning to appear. Will he be able to use his powers without losing himself, or even worse, dying? Um, well, that would make it a short yeah, series. Yeah, th that, that's a short series. If the, Believe me, this could be a short series. Um, anyhow, um, this one was just okay. I did not like the art at all at all it sort of really detracted from the story for me and also if you're a fan of dr manhattan captain adam's going to seem kind of um, familiar to you but that is because dr manhattan is um inspired by this character but if you have the image of dr manhattan and the watchman in your head then when you're reading this you're sort of kind of stuck on that um but if you like dr manhattan as a character and all that he can do you're probably going to like this guy who's, you know, very similar and has many of the same issues. 
Uh, but not a lot happens in this book, and again, the art wasn't anything great to look at, so I can't highly recommend this one. Next up we have Red Hood and the Outlaws, written by Scott Lobdell with art by Kenneth Rockefort. In this one, after a daring prison break of Arsenal, Red Hood, Arsenal and Starfire must deal with an army to gain their freedom. Weeks later in St. Martinique, Red Hood is confronted by Essence and told that the Untitled has returned. Um... I quite enjoy this one. Uh, as much as I think that it had a good story in art, there's one thing I absolutely hated in this book. Uh oh. And that's the 180 degree turn for Starfire. Mm. I love the original Starfire from the original Teen Titans in the 80s, mm -hmm. where she was a sweet, naive, innocent character. Here she's a frickin' sex pot going to have sex with everyone she can. Um, and a badass, too. Uh, but so a complete... She's really over-sexualized. Let's just say that. And I will also say, what's what up with all the sex and decapitations and everything this week in the DCU? Yes. I mean... <laughs> Sex uh, and violence is selling this week. Apparently. Um, where's my sweethearted Starfire? I miss her. Yeah. Other, other than that, I do recommend it. It's a fun book if you're a fan of this stuff. I enjoyed it. It's a fun look, different style, and it's enjoyable. I really can't say much more than that. I just didn't like the over-sexualized Starfire, that's all. All right, next up we've got DC Universe Presents number one. This is by Paul Jenkins and Bernard Chang. So in this one, Boston Brand, a.k.a. Dead Man, um, who used to be a trapeze artist in the circus before he was killed, is now a ghost with the ability... Always use a net, buddy. Yes. <laughs> um, now he's a ghost with the ability um, to possess any living, living being. Um, so we know all this about Dead Man. Um, his mission in this one is to help the needy, which um, will in turn help himself atone for the life that he lived before. So first up... He has to help Johnny Foster, a soldier who has lost his friends and his legs in an IED attack. So, this was a good first issue. The idea with this series, it looks like it's going to star several different characters for maybe like five books, like over five, um, five issues at a time, and then it'll be on to a different character, which is kind of cool. I like the whole DC Presents thing. It's been, it's been done before, and I liked how they did this one, and who they started with, for that matter. Um... I think that Jenkins did a really good job at advancing a new story for Boston Brand while summarizing his past history really well for new readers, so I thought that was good. And Chang's art um, beautifully enriches the story. Uh, I really liked this book. It's a good read. Next up, Supergirl, number one, written by Michael Green and Mike Johnson with art by Mahmoud Asar and Dan Green. And in this one, after crash landing to Earth, Kara has no idea where she is and or of the strange, strange things now confronting her, or the new powers Earth's son has given her, but she knows she must fight to survive on her new home. Um, this is an odd duck. Um, odd duck of the week, I guess you could say. Um, basically, it really can, it really focuses on how confused a confused teenager, un, unsure of where she is, and uh, it works. She doesn't know where she is. She's scared. Mm -hmm. It works in that respect. Um, I hate the red undies. Um, it doesn't work, and it just makes her look like she's on her freaking 28th day. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It just does. Um, and it, it doesn't work for me. Um, she does, however, hear things that are happening over the DC universe. Interesting. So there is that aspect, which is very interesting. And... Yeah, overall, it's an okay book, but I really can't highly recommend it. It's just a different take on Supergirl, and that's okay, but I can't really highly recommend it. All right, next up we've got Green Lantern Corps number one by Peter J. Tomazzi and Fernando Pazarin. So in this one, Guy Gardner and Jon Stewart are finding it hard to balance a life on Earth uh, with their Green Lantern Corps duties, much like Hal did back in Green Lantern. Um, but more than that, they're finding themselves wondering whether they really want to. Maybe we should just live not on Earth and screw this whole Earth thing, and we'll just come back to save yeah, it we'll when it live needs to be saving. You know, like maybe we don't need to live there. Every day. Um, but there's nothing like a deadly conflict to put off unpleasant introspection. Uh, Guy and John find themselves on a planet that has been entirely wiped out, and the perpetrators have left a dire message for the core. Um, so I loved this book. Uh, it was a great story. It had awesome art. Uh, the bad guy or girl, which is not revealed, uh, looks like a force to be reckoned with. Uh, it 
takes he takes out two Green Lantern people like that, like, and like they were nothing. So it was pretty awesome. Really she cool used first a number issue. two pencil. <laughs> um, so it, you know, if you have a chance to read it, uh, I would check it out. I know lots of people were you know not sure whether this one was going to be good, but I liked it. And my last book of the week. Catwoman, number one, written by John Wittick with art by Gwilla March. And in this one, after her apartment is firebombed, Selina must find a place to crash and a job, but also must figure out who is trying to kill her. And then there's that whole relationship with Batman. Uh -huh. um, all I can say is, interesting story, gorgeous, simply gorgeous art. Um, it really, really makes this book pop. Mm -hmm. um, there is flash flashback to Selina's childhood, when a uh, Russian mobster killed her mother, hmm. and she just happens to run into that mobster. Ah, that he's doesn't, done for. Yeah, he <laughs> doesn't, it doesn't end well for the mobster. Um, and most of the costumes stay on during sex. Yeah, the last panel's racy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the last three pages are racy. But, like I said, what's with all the sex, <laughs> DC? <laughs> this is a teen-rated book. <laughs> But anyway, on with your last two reviews. I highly recommend this one. Check it out. It's a lot of fun. All right. So next up, we've got Nightwing, number one, by Kyle Higgins and Eddie Barrows. And in this one, Dick Grayson is happy to give up the cowl and be himself. Who That's wouldn't Nightwing. be? Nightwing. Um, and it's just in time, because a rash of murders have begun in Gotham, and he's on the case. Meanwhile, Haley's circus returns to Gotham, and Dick must confront his past, just when he was feeling like he was going to just look forward to the future. Um, I really like this. It was a great story by Higgins. Uh, I like how Dick is distinguished as different from Bruce right away because we're taking him from Batman and putting him back as Nightwing and does a good job of showing how they're different and yet does address how they're still kind of the same and letting their past rule um, their present and their future. Um, but I think it's cool that Dick does try and face it, um, much like Bruce is trying to... Um, I, th I thought it was very interesting, and Barrows' art leaps off the page, uh, especially in the action sequences. I thought this was an excellent, excellent read. And last but not least, we've got Legion of Superheroes, number one, by Paul Levitz and Francis Portella. So in this one, the Legion has been decimated, and now the students Woo! of the <laughs> yeah the students of the Legion Academy must step up and fill the void, um, while a new threat rises on the edge of Dominator space. So I thought this was a great read. Uh, especially the interactions between Brainiac 5 and um, Monel, l um, who are trying to, you know, share the power and running of the team, but they constantly butt heads over it. And this might actually make mon -El a little bit more interesting character to me. If they actually have, like, an all-out fight about things, I'm really excited where this that could go. That would actually show growth. Yes. Let me answer that. Yeah, this would be, this would be interesting. Um, okay, so one interesting thing that I found in this book after reading it was that Glorith seems to be really drained by the death of Oa. Uh, which happened back in Adventure 529 for fans. Anyways, um, and she seems to long to change the events of the past. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? Uh, she, Just a tiny bit. Yes, she has the power um, to, um, I don't know, manipulate magical energy and time somewhat, if she's still, you know, all that she was before. Which makes it very interesting that she also looks like the weird cloaked figure that's been showing up all over the DC Universe. Now, mind you, that figure does show up in, in this book, book um, in the same kind of way. But isn't it interesting that that figure looks very similar to Glorith and, you know, maybe she is trying to, you know... Although the figure doesn't have the Legion The, the Legion pin. pin. You don't yeah. really see that, right? But, you know, maybe she has something to do with it. Again... And the, and the figure also has a really long finger. The, yeah, but, but I'm just yeah. saying, I don't know, maybe through some sort of time manipulation and magical manipulation, she herself was somehow torn. Maybe would this be. is a future would her be. coming back. I mean, with the Legion, there's all kinds of time traveling. Uh, so who knows? That's, you know, my interesting note of the day. And if Glorath turns out to be that hooded figure, then you heard it here first. Anyway, uh, next week is the final week of DC 52 month. So we're going to do something a little different. Mm -hmm. um, we've uh, picked our first two books, uh, first book each, if that is. Yeah, we usually um, pick our books every week that we want to read. And... Yeah, but uh, this week, we're having a raffle! Woo! Woo! So I'm so, going to do Batman the Dark Knight. That was my pick that I wanted for sure. And I wanted to do Justice League Dark. Okay, so... So um, there are 11 new books to choose. Yes. Let's start. Okay, I get I Vampire. Oh, you so poor excited. soul. <laughs> I get... 
the Savage Hawkman. Ah, uh, could be interesting. Could be interesting. Mm. Uh, Aquaman. Hopefully, Aquaman doesn't suck. <laughs> he talks to fish. He sucks. I get Blackhawks. Interesting. Ah, which is good because it's by our good friend Ken. Yes. Yes. Uh, All Star Western. Could be interesting. Some Jonah Hex action. Mm -hmm. I get. Fury of Firestorm! Ah! What a terrible character. <laughs> You're gonna have fun then. Teen Titans! Woohoo! You bitch! <laughs> Next up, I get Superman! Ah, uh, have fun. Uh. I read action, so you can have that one. The Flash! Excellent, I was looking forward to that. Francis Manipole will be gorgeous art and yes. possibly good story. I get Green Lantern New Guardians. Oh, there you go. Hopefully and that's... last and not least, Leela gets. Voodoo! Didn't I say I was gonna puke if I got by Vampire and yes. Voodoo? Blah! <laughs> oh, okay, wow. Okay, well, we could always do trades these. That's okay, that's okay. I'm gonna take one for the team and interview these ones this next week. And review, and review. Yes, review. You're gonna review. review. I'm gonna review. So. Anyway. Although, if anybody wants to be interviewed who's writing any of these books, we yep. would love to do that. We would love that'd to be, do that. That would be awesome. Because we love you all. We do. Thank Even if we give you a negative review. Yes. We still love you.